may or may not be retiring number three at some point. Right now, I don't think it's a number that they would think very fondly of, at least among the fan base, because Russell Wilson is gone, but he's coming back right out of the gates. Week one, Russell and company return to Seattle to take on a Seahawks team that isn't quite as good, let's just say, as some of the teams Wilson was on. Here's Pete Carroll talking about the prospect of facing the guy who played quarterback for the team for 10 years in week one of the 2022 season. Well, I had different reactions. You know, I had two different reactions to when I realized, you know, that this was the opener in time. I thought it was awesome, you know, that, that it was, it was, you know, seeing how it uh, does exactly what I'm saying. This is a great challenge for us to stay focused and to be on it just for all of the natural things. Playing on Monday night is huge, you know, and, and uh, for, for guys, particularly young guys. They've been watching Monday night football for their whole, their whole young life, and now they've got to go ahead and, and perform under the circumstances. So, um, it's it's a we're very fortunate to be you know to be playing in this setting and hopefully it'll we'll learn and the lessons will be there for us to take with us the rest of the season. I do have uh, as much information as you could have. But, you know I've never probably known a player any any closer than 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 knowing Russ and his quarterback and his play and mentality and all of that. Um, so um, you know he knows he knows me too. You know he knows us. So um, we'll see what happens. Early this week, Kevin Stefanski the coach of the Browns said it's overrated to have that knowledge who benefits the Seahawks know Russ Russ knows the Seahawks I, I I think all that matters is right now the Seahawks aren't very good and the Broncos while not on the upper echelon that some of their fans would zealously argue they should be regarded as being they're still better than the Seahawks right now and I think that's all that really matters and that's why they put this game week one, Mike. I mean, the league knows, right? If you wait even week two and the Seahawks get blown out in week one and the Broncos lose, all of a sudden you've got more of a dud in week two. And certainly if you wait till week 15, it really could be a, a bad game. So this was a perfect opportunity for this game to be played. And I, I read this in Bob Condota of the Seattle Times yesterday, and I hadn't really thought about it, but he's completely accurate. This could be the first and the last time that Russell Wilson ever returns to Seattle, assuming that he stays in Denver, depending on how that rotation works out, depending on if they go to 18 games, Mike. But you think about that. This could be the last time he plays as an opponent uh, in Seattle. It is possible that, that happens. Stunning to me. It's once every I eight just years. I thought about it. Yeah. It's yeah. once every eight years that you go as part of the rotation for the teams in the divisions in the other conference. And they set that up 20 years ago to make sure that if you're a season ticket holder over the course of eight years, you're going to see every team in the NFL because it used to not be that way. And there were some teams that just never made it to a given stadium. So there, then there's also a possibility to be the 17th game. There's a possibility if there is an 18th game. But yeah, he may never be back there. Again, eight years, a lot happens. He'll be early 40s by then, 41 going on 42, and we'll see. Yeah. You know, he said he wants to play until he's 45. It's easy to say when you're 33. We'll see how he feels when he's 38, 39, yeah. and 40. Uh, but this will be his first, even if it's last, it will definitely be his first time back. Here is new offensive captain. They have one offensive captain. It had been Russell Wilson. It's now receiver Tyler Lockett. Here's Lockett from yesterday on the reception that he hopes Russell Wilson receives. At the end of the day, I get it. It's football. It's competitive. You never want to see people leave, but you got to understand that everybody has to do what's best for them. And that's what you have to be able to learn about this life is you got to cheer people on. You know what I mean? You can't get mad that people go to another team and this, this, and this. And I mean, we're fans, right? So we learn it the hard way. I'm a fan when it comes to NBA. I get mad when people leave because I want them to stay on the same team, right? But at the end of the day, you got to be able to separate the man from the player. And you got to understand that everybody's trying to do what's best for them. And all you can do is hope that they win and cheer for them to win. And so, I mean, that's really how I feel about it. I think that Seattle should cheer him on, you know, for everything that he's done, brought us, helped bring a Super Bowl to this community, all that different type of stuff. Like, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, that's not how it works, though. That's not how it works. By the way, by the way, I do have bad news for anybody who's looking forward to watching that game on Monday night and not having their retinas burned out of their eye sockets because the yeah. highlighter green – that, that's what the Seahawks are wearing. Get ready for the highlighter green on Monday night. If you're not already prepared, 
maybe go find an old black and white set somewhere in the attic, or maybe over at grandma's house, watch it in black and white because anything that's left of your rods and cones will be gone after three more hours of those god awful, hideous, pathetic. How does anyone like? How does anyone look at that and say, "Man, that looks great"? How how can you look at that? Do we have the still frame of that horrendous, Ugh. pathetic? Awful. Like, what is the worst color we can make our jersey? How about this? That's the winner. That's the absolute worst color we can make it. Let's make it that color, and we'll see it on on Monday night when Russell Wilson comes back to town, and he'll probably feel better about being gone when he sees it. Shereen, I, there will. Here's the problem: booze carry, booze find their way through. Even if it's only five percent of the crowd, you're going to hear the boos. There will be people under the cover of the anonymity of being in that crowd who will boo. We know it. We are going to hear boos. The question is, will it just be the smattering, or will it? It, it won't be the unrelenting every time he was on the field. Brett Favre getting booed at Lambeau Field. That's not going to happen because Russell Wilson didn't no. force his way to an NFC West team. But I still think he will hear some boos. He's going to hear some, and I know the Seattle Storm had a thing where he was in a video to say goodbye to Sue Bird, and there were boos in that crowd recently. I think the majority of people will cheer him before the game when they're showing the tribute video. I assume they'll do something like that. I assume he will be mostly cheered. There will be some boos, and he's going to hear them. But when you think of Seattle sports history, Mike, I mean, it's pretty recent that, that they've had – major league teams and he's the guy he's the number one sports figure in seattle history i mean you they had alex rodriguez of course and king griffey jr and lenny wilkins and some of those people but he's the one you think of when you think of seattle sports history so they should cheer him he won him a super bowl nearly won him a second super bowl and so i i, I think fans should do that i think the majority will do that but it won't be everyone. You're right. Some are going to boo him because they're going to be mad that, that he talked his way out of Seattle. Well, and, and I think that's the key. When you look at the full scope of his time with the Seahawks and you consider that they rallied around him, they defended him against any criticism that he's maybe a little phony at times, a little too contrived, a little corny, a little goofy. He was their guy. So... They they fended off anyone that would dare say those things about him. But now that he talks his way out and it was something that lingered, it was something they were very angry about any time the topic came up. And then after years of Seahawks fans shouting down people like me, I'd go on KGR radio and say, hey, look, this guy's not signing another contract. This guy's going to be gone and they would lose their minds about it. I think once he put them in a position where they ended up looking bad for taking the position he's never leaving. I think you put all that together and there's going to be some people who are upset and very much looking forward to the opportunity to let him hear it. Because at the end of the day, this wasn't the Seahawks setting him adrift. This was Russell Wilson wanting out and Russell Wilson coming off ultimately as being far more calculated than they would allow themselves to think he was. That's really the key, Shireen. The fans who get it, understand that there was a calculation here by Russell Wilson and all that stuff he was saying was BS about wanting to stay for the rest of his career. He was looking for an off ramp. There's going to be fans and I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying what they're going to do. I think there's going to be fans who are very upset about it and this is their opportunity to let him hear it. Yeah, no question, Mike. And now they're rebuilding at the position and they don't have a long-term starter. It doesn't seem to me at the position so you know post Russell Wilson is not probably going to be pretty for the Seahawks and they're going to blame him for however the season goes if it doesn't go well and so that's why he's going to hear some booze out of this thing but you think about what he did bring his Super Bowl to the city and all the things he did off the field I mean this is a Walter Payton man of the year for what he did in that community he started a charter school and during COVID he was feeding people and he just did so much for the Seattle community uh, in more ways than just football, but that that you know, it's what have you done for me lately? And what he did for them lately is he talked his way out of town and left them uh, with with pretty much a dry bone there at the position and at with this team, and they're just not going to be very good, and they're going to blame Russell Wilson for that. There's no question about that. Well, 
there was a time when they were chanting Geno last year after Russell Wilson messed up his finger on the Thursday night game against the Rams. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. Part of the dissing of Russell Wilson may include a full-throated embrace of Geno, Geno, Geno. And that'll be kind of a little way to stick it to Russell Wilson if they really show their love for the guy who's the starting quarterback, at least for now. And who knows what's going to happen. As you said, genius move by the NFL to make this the week one game before the Seahawks have their season go sideways. And the Broncos, frankly, when you consider the division they're in and the games they're going to play this year, their season could go sideways too. This could have been a meaningless game in November. It's a very meaningful game right out of the gates. Nathaniel Hackett, the first-year Broncos coach, told reporters yesterday they're going to max out the fake noise they use to prepare for that crowd. Same thing they'll do when they go to Arrowhead. And this was a point Sims made yesterday. One of the reasons why, and there's 10 road favorites this week so there are 10 home underdogs one of the reasons teams are winning on the road shireen they have learned how to adapt and deal with the noise and sims is a firm believer that it's a product of having those practices where the noise is unrelenting and they get accustomed to operating in an environment where they just can't hear themselves think Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.